So I used to be one of those people who said that they were spiritual but not religious. And if you've watched any of my other videos then you'll know that I used to be a New Ager and a member of a New Age cult. So naturally whenever I find out about another New Age cult, I'm like a moth to a flame. It fascinates me. And this week someone put me onto this cult called Universal Medicine. So in this video I'm going to give you some background on Unimed as it's sometimes called and I'm going to highlight some of the troubling aspects and then point out any red flags that I noticed while I was researching. Before we start if you've seen any of my other Teal Swan videos then you're in for a treat. I mean there's a lot of familiar things here. It's formulaic really, just wait. And if you've been getting something out of my Teal Swan videos then I think you're going to find this one interesting too because there's a lot of similar Similarities. So let's go for a bit of backstory on this cult. So wherever a group like this gains a foothold first, I think says a lot about the group itself. It's no surprise that Teal Swan's cult took hold in Utah, or that Osho's took hold in Antelope, Oregon, or that Jamie Simone Gomez's took hold in LA. The heavily religious atmosphere of Utah, the relative quiet isolation of Antelope, and the glitz and glamour of LA. Each place corresponds to something deeply relevant to the cult leader themselves and emblematic of the cult in a sense. So in Australia, in amongst the northern rivers of New South Wales, is a region known as the Rainbow Region. The unemployment rate is high and there's a naturopathy or nat... I, can never, I don't know how to pronounce that but you, you get the word. And homeopathy uh, community there and a huge anti-vaxxer community as well. It's also an artistic hub with a music conservatorium and a legal graffiti scene. It's never been a particularly rich area, especially in recent years after a devastating flood broke the riverbanks. But the rich culture persists, even to the extent that one city there, by the name of Nimbin, has been dubbed one of the cannabis capitals of Australia. And a little way south of Nimbin is the small city of Lismore. In the 2016 census, the population was at around 27,500. So here, surrounded by the New Age, surrounded by alternative medicine and an establishment suspicious attitude. This is where we find Unimed. Since it was born, it has spread around the world and now also has a base in Froome in Somerset in the UK. It's been designated a socially harmful cult by the New South Wales Supreme Court and it is responsible for splitting up families, coercing people on their deathbed to give up money and a whole other series of strange and worrying practices. And some of the more extreme of which I probably won't be able to cover in one video, but um, needless to say, strange, worrying, scary, dangerous, it's the kind of area we're in. Serge Benhayen was born in Uruguay in the 60s and when he was about six, moved from Uruguay to Sydney, Australia with his family. It's easy to imagine feeling like a fish out of water in a situation like that. You come from one place and then you're dumped somewhere completely different. You're going to feel like you're different to the people around you from the get-go. Partly because you've seen more and you've met more kinds of people. And along with that comes a sense of alienation. But when Ben Hayen failed as a tennis coach and went bankrupt, New Age would have been beckoning him. New Agers are nothing if not welcoming after all. I mean, well, at least initially, and then it gets weird really quickly. One thing I found with the New Age is that it is full of genuinely lovely people, you know, Ben Hayen and other cult leaders aside, um, but a lot, pe a lot of people in the New Age feel broken in a way. They feel, they, they kind of wear their heart on the sleeve, they're very sensitive, very emotional. That kind of thing is quite common in the New Age, so, that kind of leads to that welcoming, that welcoming feeling of, hey, how, oh, hey, come on, that kind of feeling. And um, for someone who was, had lived the life Ben Hayen, had lived up to that point, you could understand why that would appeal to him. And soon, while sitting on the toilet, and I'm not making that up, um, Ben Hayen had an awakening and went on to found Universal Medicine. Now that's not to build too much empathy with the guy, I mean, he's done some horrible things, but I would hope that that kind of little bit of background helps to make it clear the culture in which this thing kind of came about and gives a little bit of insight into its founding and the mind behind it. Speaking of, Ben Hayen is a self-proclaimed ascended master. Now, if you're an ex-New Ager like me, then you'll know what um, 
Ascended Master means. It's a dog whistle for New Age types and it's also part of the New Age kind of trend of rolling up these age-old sort of religious esoteric ideas into something that is supposed to be ultimate truth. Um, but if you're hearing this and thinking, well this sounds like a, a run-of-the-mill New Age cult that just kind of went a bit too far. No, they are unique in their own way. They have ideas about burping out bad spirits. Ben Hayen, or The One, has raised himself up as some kind of deliverer of esoteric knowledge. All unfalsifiable, mind you. That's another common trend in New Age cults. And uh, he also says that he is the reincarnation of Da Vinci, Pythagoras, St. Paul, and Imhotep. Does that sound like someone else to you? I mean, Teal said that she's um, the reincarnation of Shirdi Sai Baba, I believe, as well. I mean, you know, do you know what bugs me about this? It's never Pepe that used to sell tortillas in the Aztec Empire, is it? It's always some, like, really, like, well-established, everyone loves the this historical figure, but never Pepe. So some of the more notable teachings in Unimed are to the core New Age. And there's also some quite strict dietary and sleep requirements as well, um, which is a red flag for me, and it also ticks a few boxes on the bite model. Ben Hayen has written so many books, and he is just a font of unsubstantiated, unverifiable claims. Um, I'd be sitting here all day if I wanted to read them to you, um, but I've picked a few of the ones that I found that are quite worrying. So I'm, I'm just going to read them off here. Um, Past life evil is responsible for Down syndrome, autism, disabilities in general, apparently. People, including children who have survived sexual abuse, were abused because of past life karma. Um, I mean, that's standard victim blaming New Age tripe right there. Apparently, <laughs> apparently exercise causes cancer and being menful, which I guess means masculine, apparently also causes infertility. Um, and here's a direct quote from Ben Hayen as well. Women have achieved equality in some measure by outmailing the man. Therefore, they too are in the excessiveness of male energy. This, this why, apparently this why, rather than this is why, uh, this why there are so many cases of ovarian cancer, fibroids, I think I'm saying that right, um, cysts, endometriosis, breast cancer, etc. I mean, this is nonsense, and it's offensive nonsense as well. Uh, again, prove it. To be honest, I also feel like I could hear Jordan Peterson saying something like this. I mean, maybe a few different terms, put something about axioms in there, um, but it's essentially Jordan Peterson level drivel. Um, and let's be fair as well, like, if it's anything that you could, if you could pin all of this on one thing and you can't pin all of those illnesses on one thing, it's more likely that at least a large contributor is stress, given the effect that stress has on the human body. Definitely not menfulness or whatever that is. Also, if you can prove that energy exists in the way that you seem to think it does, then we can talk about what that energy does and how or how it does or how it doesn't affect the human body. Until you've proved that that energy works in the way you think it does, we don't really have a conversation. That There's no conversation to be had. One follower said, Like us, Serge understands that if Western medicine were the holy grail, we'd all be well, and we're not. Who's likening modern medicine to the holy grail? It seems like they're saying that even though we have medicine, because we still get sick, medicine isn't doing its job. Do you understand medicine? <laughs> Do you understand medicine? <laughs> it also sounds like a false cause fallacy to me as well, like sickness is caused by medicine not being good enough. Don't even know where to start with that. Just because we've got antibiotics and phages, does that mean that we're not going to get infections anymore? No. I must have misunderstood this. I mean, I'm reading it and I'm thinking, so devoid of logic that I'm actually questioning whether I've read it right. I hope I've read this wrong. I honestly hope I've read this wrong. Anyway, moving on, we've got another one. Uh, apparently, a man's negative energy is passed on to the people he has sex with. And again, prove energy exists in the way you think it does before we start talking about what it does or doesn't do. Um, but also apparently, if a father is possessed by an entity that particularly likes sex, 
then while you're asleep at night, that energy, that spirit, whatever, will leave your body and rape your daughters. I mean, who comes up with this stuff? Like, what kind of a mind conceives of these ideas? I could understand, like, a novelist doing it, but coming up with that and then telling people it's true. Also, again, fucking prove it. Like, you're just saying things and horrible things. There's some other stuff as well about, like, some, and some really specific stuff about aliens and some quite detailed descriptions of those aliens um, and claims that they're watching you all the time, um, which is kind of like the whole God's watching you um, thing. Um, so apparently these aliens are as interested in what you do in the bedroom as um, God is. But alas, you can only cover so much in one YouTube video. Also, a quote. UM practices an unproven technique on women called deeper femaleness, claiming it is great for rape recovery. It also involves hands-on esoteric healing of a woman's abdomen and pubic area and manipulation of a woman's pubic bone. UM publi publications show that... I never know if it's publications or publifications. Is that, is that even a word? I think I'm just overcomplicating that. UM publications show that the therapy is performed by men. Um, there's links to all the quotes and stuff of everything down in the description. Um, but yeah, that, I mean that's... It's the kind of thing you expect when you get into these kinds of areas, um, when you start dealing with these kinds of people, but um, yeah, I'm sure I missed some other things that are equally worrying, but as I say, you can only get so much in one video. And these are, these are the things that I found in my research. Um, if you're aware of this kind of thing and you're, you're familiar with anything that's more worrying, drop it in the comments below, because um, awareness is vital with things like this. But nonetheless, that is a glimpse at the strange and dark world of Unimed's teachings. So earlier on, I mentioned that this Unimed cult is really similar to the Teal Swan cult, and it is. I'm gonna tell you about that in just a second, but I wanted to just pause for a moment and let you know that I've just set up a Patreon. Um, so if you're enjoying the kinds of videos that I'm making here and you wanna help me make more, you wanna see more of these kinds of videos, then please consider becoming a patron. I've set up a bunch of perks which include, but are not limited to, behind the scenes content, uh, private Google Hangouts with me and other patrons, discounts on future merchandise, and also a say in the videos that I make once a month. Um, if that kind of thing interests you and you're interested in supporting this channel, then please consider becoming a patron, patron, a, pa a patron, and um, there's links for all of that stuff in the description below. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about how Unimed and the Teal Swan Cult are similar. So there's a lot of similarities here, and some of them are more subtle, some of them are striking. Now, here's a few that I've noticed. Both of these cult leaders seem to like to say things like strange things that they have no real need to say. Like no one's asking them to say these things and they just bleh, they just come out with it. Like no one really cares whether or not Tia was made by aliens to be beautiful so that people would want to listen to her. Like no one asked her for that information. She just said it. Like she didn't need to and she did. Like Ben Hayen claimed that he can orgasm like a man and a woman at the same time. Um, there's an extra dynamic to that that I've, um, I, I'm not going to talk about in this video again, there's only so much you can include, but it, iffy. But he was asked a question and this was part of his answer for it. Did he need to say it? No. Was it a necessary part of his answer? No. He just clearly wanted everyone to know how special his orgasms are. I mean, maybe he can. Hormones are complicated, right? But who asked? Who asked you to tell us this, Ben Hayen? I could see how that would be something that was mentioned in a conversation among friends, or, or something that, you know, two people who know each other quite well might share. It's quite an intimate thing to say. He said it on a stage in front of a room full of people when he was asked a question that, as I say, didn't, didn't need this in the answer, right? It was kind of a David Brent moment, or at least it would have been a David Brent moment if this guy wasn't an awful charlatan taking advantage of people under undue influence and targeting cancer patients, but we'll circle back to that part. He also claims to know more than scientists in his inner heart. I don't know, like, is opposed to his outer heart, or like what? So another thing in the New Age is to mistrust institutions and honestly sometimes misrepresent and mischaracterize institutions, um, which sets you up for confirmation bias. Um, you can see that in the Teal Swan Cult too. But the main way that these two groups are similar in my mind is that they are set up like businesses and appear like businesses 
but they operate like cults. Look at either of their websites and you're gonna get like a surface level insight into what they're about, right? But the truth underneath that, behind that, is a lot more insidious. And when you dig in, you find some strange and worrying things. To the unsuspecting eye, Teal and Ben Hayen are just your average Eckhart Toll, who, as far as I'm aware, is just someone who sells present moment awareness practice and rakes it in. On the other hand, you've got these two, who are hailed as these benign, insightful, revolutionary authorities but are really unsafe cult leaders offering life-wrecking advice. The business model of the once great motivational speaker here has become, in a sense, the business model of the self-help mindfulness guru. The model's the same. You write a book, you do some public speaking arrangements, maybe you make some videos, you do some podcasts, you're interviewed, that kind of thing, and then lather, rinse, repeat. Maybe chuck a retreat or two in there. Now, the, the model itself is harmless enough if what you're offering isn't damaging. But then start victim blaming and trying to coerce people to write their children out of their will and it starts to get really iffy really quickly. Especially when you want the person to donate everything that you've, lo that you've got left on your deathbed to the cult or to the leader personally. So from what I've seen in the research I've done into Unimed, it does fit at least some of Lifton's eight criteria for thought reform. To be honest, that's a video worth doing on both the Unimed and the Teal Swan cult, to be honest. If you want to see that kind of thing, make sure you hit subscribe and, and let me know that you'd like to see it and then I can make it. But now let's look at Unimed's troubling treatment of money and wills and cancer patients. Judith McIntyre, a terminally ill cancer patient, was emailing Ben Hayen in her last days. During the emails, Ben Hayen used loaded language and uh, fear tactics to try to convince Judith to donate her money, the money in her will, to Universal Medicine. Here he makes mention of the astral, which in Universal Medicine insider doctrine essentially refers to the cult that everyone who isn't inside the Universal Medicine cult um, is part of. So you and me, if we're not inside the Unimed cult, we're part of the astral cult. I mean, talk about us versus them. I mean, a bimodal analysis on Unimed would be a walk in the park. He also mentions the hierarchy, which is another loaded term that refers to a group that Ben Hayen believes he's part of as an ascended master. Now, in these emails, Ben Hayen told Judith that the astral is playing with her money, that the family and the law firm handling her estate were trying to destabilize her and how it's all an attack on the money the hierarchy wants. Apparently that's the real motivation for the astral um, on earth is to hinder what the hierarchy is trying to do and that money is a really important part of it. It wouldn't be a persecution complex without a made up enemy. Whatever. The emails go on and include subversive attempts to convince Judith to hand over her money. And he succeeded, I believe. After a huge donation that Judith made to Universal Medicine, um, Ben Hayen told her to keep it quiet because of other uh, unsubstantiated claims. I believe to do with another group called the Dark Lodge, but again, there's a lot, there's so much information on Unimed out there, I'm trying to like pick and choose like the most relevant and the most worthwhile um, stuff to put into one video, and I may have even missed stuff as I say, so. This, I believe, is what caused Unimed to be labelled a socially dangerous and a socially harmful cult by the New South Wales Supreme Court. That's a reasonable judgement, I think you'll agree. The judge also said that Ben Hayen intentionally indecently touched clients. Again, that's a whole other video, and I think that deserves its, its own video. Um, and the judge said that Ben Hayen is a charlatan who makes fraudulent medical claims. I don't know if that's grounds for arrest in Australia, but it surprises me that he's not at least... I mean, I would imagine he's being watched by the police at this rate. Um, while researching this video, I reached out to Esther Rocket, who's one of the most vocal anti-Unimed um, activists, and asked her if she had anything that she would like to say to current or ex-members of Unimed. She said that Unimed followers should cut their losses, and that things won't improve while they're Ben Hayen followers. She said a lot of people regret being in a cult, but no one regrets leaving. Um, I think that's generally true. Thank you, Esther, if you're watching this, for our very quick chat and for giving me that to share for these people. And uh, if you want to know more about what Esther's doing, see her site, see her videos, then all the links for that are in the description below. Highly recommend that if you're interested in Unimed. But before I go, let me leave you with this. A lot of Unimed followers are educated professionals, doctors, scientists, healthcare professionals. 
let that be a reminder that anyone can fall under undue influence. And I think that in this day and age, it is paramount that we're all educated on the nature of undue influence and how to spot red flags. There's too many people in cults saying it's not a cult because of X, Y, and Z, even though it is a cult. Or, I'm, I would never be in a cult because of X, Y, or Z, even though they are in a cult. If you're not educated on undue influence, then how can you know if you're in one? So, I also want to say a huge thank you to Navadia for throwing ideas back and forth with me for this video. And if you haven't seen her channel yet, then I rec highly recommend that you go over there and subscribe and um, check out some of her videos. She's making awesome content, but be nice. Be nice. She's lovely. Also, I want to say a massive, massive thank you and give a huge shout out to my very first patron, Manal. So, thank you Manal for becoming a patron and supporting this channel. It means a lot. That about wraps this video up, so thank you for watching and um, please consider becoming a patron if you like the content I'm making and you want to see more and help the channel, then that is the best way to do it, I think, once you're subscribed, of course. And you can do that all while getting some of the awesome things that I've set up to say thank you for doing that. As normal, if you want to get in touch with me personally, you can do that through my social media, all the links are in the description. And if you think this video is going to help anyone, then please feel free to share that out, share it with them and I will see you in the next one.